Hello and welcome to my studio today. Today I'm going to be sharing my top five techniques to use when using a palette knife to paint an oil painting. Um, and these are techniques that I use. I paint mostly with palette knives. Um, I probably do about 80% of my paintings with a palette knife and that is start to finish. So I'm not using brushes at all. So these tips have come in really helpful. So I will be walking you through those de different techniques today. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Gretchen Steffi. I'm a contemporary oil painter here in New Hampshire, painting out of my home studio. Um, and I am passionate about sharing my kind of art techniques, as well as a passion for helping other people sell their own artwork and create a business um, with a lifestyle they love. So if that sounds interesting, feel free to subscribe or like this video. It actually helps me so much, so I appreciate it. So to get started, a really quick kind of introduction to the palette knives themselves. So I paint, there are so many palette knives on the market. You can get um, all kinds of different shapes. I just paint with three knives. So this is the style I like to paint with. I like a kind of a sharp tip at the end. Um, you can see this one's nice and flat, kind of triangular shaped. Um, you want to make sure that it is, you're painting with something that's pretty flexible. You are going to be putting pressure on it, so it's actually, you're going to be using that flex when you paint. Um, I also like having the handle, a long handle that has kind of a downward point here, which is kind of what they call a trowel style palette knife, that you can find them that have straight. So you just can, you may want to try them out and figure out what works for you. Um, and I use three different sizes. So I use kind of a small, uh, medium, and large size and the more i work with palette knives the more i try to stick with the the largest size um, because you can still be using the end of this palette knife here to paint um, um, which would be the same as kind of the small one so as much as you can do with just one knife the better uh, so those are the knives that i use um, when i most of my palette knives paintings are done on a panel so this is an example of a panel um, this is a linen panel, I believe, and it is when you're painting with a palette knife, you're putting a lot of pressure on that palette or on the, the canvas, whatever it is you're using. And so I find that with canvases, I tend to put enough pressure that it, it kind of warps them sometimes. So I do use canvases. Here's an example of a small, another small canvas I did. Um, and I just have to be careful. I'm not pushing too hard in the middle because what I don't want is to get any warping here on the canvas. Uh, today I am actually going to be using a just a piece of uh, canvas like a roll of canvas that is just taped to some cardboard and I'm going to be doing it flat just because it's going to be easier for me to demo um, usually I am painting on an easel with my with my canvases so um, so that's what I use to paint my use with my palette knives so the next thing to share is paint um, I'm an oil painter so a lot of these techniques um, can be used for either painting with acrylic or painting with oils. Um, so really the paint doesn't matter. Um, that's a whole nother conversation as to the types of paint that I prefer, but you can be using anything. Uh, because using a palette knife tends to add more texture and depth to the paint when it's applied, a lot of people will use some sort of matte. So I have a like an acrylic matte gel here. You can find this for oil painting too. It just means that you're using a little bit less of the paint itself and you're getting some of the, the body with this gel. So that's another option of something you can use. Um, and I'll show you one of the techniques specifically show is kind of demonstrating how you would maybe build up layers or add some depth with the paint. So, so that's uh, kind of the intro. And then what I wanna do is get into the different tips and techniques. Okay, so the first thing you should be doing when you have your palette knife is you should be cleaning it with a paper towel between every use. So unlike a brush that you can kind of dip and reuse, palette knives in general are gonna be cleaned, which means for the most part, you're putting the paint that you want onto the palette, if that, or onto, the, onto your canvas, which if that makes any sense. So I do most of my paint mixing over here on my palette and then I'm putting whatever the paint is I want on to the canvas all at once. There are a few exceptions. Um, I do do some mixing and some of the final techniques here will show you that. Um, but in general, I'm gonna be using just that paint. So the first thing is you wanna be holding your palette knife really loose. Um, I tend to use it to hold it kind of far back. I will often put my finger on top here. That just gives me a little bit more um, kind of fine tuned motor skills here. 
Um, and you're going to, so for the first technique, it's just going to be how you put on a lot of paint all at once. This would be like filling a background of a painting or putting in water or blocking it in in the first place. So to do that, I'm just going to spread my paint out a little bit here. Um, I'm going to be pulling out my paint onto the side of my palette knife like this. Okay, and so the technique is you're going to be holding that palette knife just angled up from your canvas. And you're just going to be scraping that paint across your canvas. So I didn't get quite enough paint there, but I'm going to be painting it by just scraping it across my canvas. And this is how you're going to just put in a lot of paint, a lot of area all at once. Um, and so some people who are using a brush for some of their later parts of their painting are also going to be using a palette knife to put in that paint in the first place. So the, the angle that you use here is important. So the more flat you make it, you're going to get kind of a thicker amount of paint. Whereas if you are using the side of your brush a little bit more, you can scrape a little bit more um, and you may be able to get a thinner part of the painting. Often I will do that. You'll see me do this a lot where I pull it across is just to get the paint off the brush or the palette knife. And then I'm going to be cleaning the knife before I pick up the next color. So that's pretty simple. Technique number one. The next technique is going to be called, um, it's just going to be a used, I use it to create textures. Sometimes you'll hear it called scrumbling and that is, similar but it's often done across the top of some paint that's already on your canvas and it gives kind of a mottled look people like to use this in water um, in um, painting rocks things like that where you just want a little bit of texture and you're basically just taking your paint and you're pulling it across so you're not trying to block it all in like you would here in this upper piece but you're letting these kind of smaller pieces of paint just go across like that and it adds a really interesting um, element to paintings so let me show you a couple examples of how I have used these in paintings so I don't tend to use the texture too often but I do use it a bit when I'm painting reflections so you can see in this painting here I've pulled paint down across the the top of the other paint um, in a couple different spots and I'm just using that to kind of add that extra layer of paint built on so it's you're seeing those colors built on top of each other um, and you're going to see that kind of being pulled down across the other paint. Another example of blocking the paint in um, you can see this one here and I'm going to show you this oops I'm going to show you this technique again um, at the, one of the later steps but you can see here I've blocked in all of this paint using this top technique. Um, you can see that there's multiple colors, so I'm going to show you how I put multiple colors into those blocks in just a second. Okay, so the next element or technique is using lines. And I really, this is one of my favorite things to do with a palette knife. So even if I'm doing a painting with a a, a, a brush, I'm still going to pull out my palette knives to get straight lines. So just like just like in these paintings up here, the palette knife, I'm going to load paint onto the edge of the palette knife. Almost every time I use a palette knife, I'm just putting the paint along that edge. And to do lines, you can just simply pull the palette knife across sideways. And the more on the edge you get it, the thinner the line. And the more you put your palette knife down, the thicker the line. You can also do small by pulling down. If you're looking for something with a, this might be nice if you're working on a kind of a horizon line. I often will do this and pull my colors down to build up that line, but I'm creating that straight line. In addition to putting the line on itself, another technique you'll see palette knife painters do, and I'm just gonna add a whole bunch of paint here to give you a chance to see what I'm talking about. Put some more blue in there. So 
So when you have a paint like this, you can actually just run your palette knife through there to get a line. And this is especially nice if you've underpainted underneath this color here and you have a paint color that's going to show through. So you can see here, I'm starting to get some different colors. It looks like the, the green I put on at first is really coming through, um, but you can use that to create lines in your painting. All right, so then, then you can see, let's see, let me show you an example of how I've used those lines in painting. So in this painting here, you can see that the lines for the sailboats were created using palette knives um, just on their edge. And it gives, you can make it, depending on how much paint you're putting on there, you can make it a very distinct, clear line, um, or you could have it kind of look more just kind of the idea of a line. Um, and that just depends on how much paint you put on and how much pressure you're putting on the palette knife itself. All right, for the, now the next technique, and this is the one that I think palette knife painters are the most known for, is simply building up texture. So I'm gonna grab some paint, and if I'm doing something with texture, I'm often gonna put it further on the tip of my knife. Uh, you'll see a lot of people will paint tr trees, flowers, leaves, um, clouds, things like that, where they want that paint to come up off the surface. And when you're doing that, you're basically just applying your paint. It's probably a little bit hard to see from this distance, but you're creating a textured area. And you're allowing that paint to kind of sit up above the canvas. So you'll see a lot of flowers are created this way. This is kind of the start of a flower. You'll also sometimes see paint put on like this, where the edge of that has some body to it or is raised up from the canvas. So you can see, let me show you an example. So if you can see this painting here, the clouds up here have a lot of body to them um, and depth. And that's just by putting on those layers and, and thicker paint. It does take it longer to dry. So if you, if you are using that, that method, just make sure you're giving your painting plenty of drying time. Okay, the final technique that I'm gonna share is just how you blend paint. Um, most of the time I'm trying to create that, the colors that I want on my uh, palette, but there are times when I'm trying to blend from maybe a darker sky up top to a, a uh, lighter sky down the bottom or something with water or whatever it is you're trying to blend. So there's a couple methods here. Let me get a little bit more paint. There are a couple methods for doing that. And I'm gonna show you both of them. So one is to start by putting, let's see, we'll put a little bit of paint on my canvas. And then let's say that I want to grow this down a little bit into a lighter sky below. I'm gonna put another amount of paint there. Maybe I want a little bit of green towards the bottom. So I have my, my different colors, and then all I'm gonna do is just go over top of them to blend them together. Looks like I might need a little bit more of the blue. And you can keep adding those colors on top and dragging your paint, your palette knife across it until you get a really lovely shading. I took a little too much here. It's very forgiving and you can go back and always add in more. But you can see I've got a nice gradient there. It's also fun to experiment with putting Another technique here is putting different color paints right on. So right here I have blues, greens, and white all on the palette knife at the same time. And I'm simply going to drag that across. So you can see you get, can get really interesting color here, or you can use that to now blend by just going over and over it until I get a much more blended color. 
You can also simply blend by putting your paint on. Let's see, you've blocked out some painting here. And then you decide that you actually want to lighten that up. You can put that lighter color here and just go over it and over it until you have the desired color. Remember to keep changing the angles of your palette knife. And the whole time I'm really just using this edge of my knife here. So to show you a little bit about what how that looks in an actual painting, so I, I kind of had showed you, let's see, this one, where you can see that the top here is just a little bit different color and gets into more pinks. So I use that same method up top here to get the sky um, to show some gradient. Or you can look at, this was just, I was playing around with this one here. You can see the mountains, they have that I put multiple colors on my palette knife at once and then dragged that across the painting. Um, so you can see what that would look like. So those are my five techniques to share with you today. Just a quick review. This is just how you block in and how you hold your, your knife to block in a large area. This is where you would build up texture, um, where you're dragging that paint right across the top of something else. Um, great for highlights, things like that. Um, here you can see I've worked on some lines um, I, I don't have a good, I didn't do a great job demonstrating that you can actually make those lines pretty, um, let's see, pretty thin. So you can get kind of a very clean line. Um, and you can use that to create a line on a horizon. Um, and you can also use it as negative, kind of pulling out the negative space where you're putting the line through the paint that exists. The, impa the impasto or the building up of layers um, and using the depth of the paint um, is a really great technique. Um, and then finally, just blending the paint on the canvas to get either a kind of a, a horizon or a sky or anything where you need to have your colors fade. Um, and then also using the same kind of similar techniques to get really unique pulls of color across a painting. Um, and then the one kind of bonus that I really love about palette knife painting is that when you're done and you want to, uh, start over or you don't like your painting, palette knives are great for scraping off the paint. It doesn't mean you're gonna get it all off, but for example here, I could go in, I could scrape that all off while it's still wet, and I can then go back in and start whatever it is I'm doing all over again. That is it. Those are my techniques for palette knife painting. So thank you for joining me here in the studio today. Um, if you liked this video, or you found it helpful, please subscribe, share, like, all of those things that really help me keep putting out content um, and keep my small business afloat. So I appreciate you joining me here today. I'll drop a couple other links to videos I've done that talk about palette knife painting um, down in the description below so you can check those out. Um, and as always, have a great rest of your day and whatever artistic journey you're on, I hope you have a successful one.